How's it going, everybody? So, after making my previous SIG videos, I uh, decided to go ahead and order the pins to go ahead and fix this old Chrome beat up 226. Um, talked about a previous video, the pins were shot out on this on this gun for the, the roll pin for the breech block, and the breech block would actually wobble inside the uh, slide, which is not good. Um, we caught it caused various problems. For one, if you just shot it enough, uh, you could fork the slide. Um, but it, for me, it was causing failures to fire because there's a, it, the firing pin's under inertia when it gets struck by the hammer, and there's not a lot of extra oomph. Like if you just press on it, it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way through the breech block. Uh, you have to you have to push something in uh, to get it to go and strike the firing pin. And that, that's because it's inertia based. So adding some tilt to it would ca cause it enough, have enough that where the firing pin actually wasn't igniting the primers. Also, it could cause failures to extract and some other issues. <clears throat> so anyway, I've, got the, I've had this out in the park for quite some time. I ordered these roll pins. I actually got four or five sets of them from Matrix Precision. And they specialize in various parts, mainly SIG stuff. But they're a double roll pin. There's a inner and an outer. Uh, these are wear. These are wear items. On these, any of these folded stamp slide SIGs. Uh, generally, rule of thumb is about five, every five thousand rounds. So, you know, uh, it's a good idea. On top of that, I mean, if this gun is a chrome plated gun, and you, you, if you might be able to see how filthy it is inside here. Um, I may not be able to clean that effectively because it's been in there for so long. This is not really a, a heavy use gun, period. Even if I get it working right, it's going to be just a halvesies. <clears throat> but so, breech block. You got your firing pin, obviously, your firing pin, your drop safety. Uh, you know, you got to push up, it pushes up when you press the trigger, and then your extractor. Another idea, or another thing you pretty much almost have to do, you don't have to do it, but it's, you'd be dumb not to while you got it apart, is to pull the extractor out. But uh, I just used a little miniature pick screw driver tip off my Gerber uh, while you got it apart because this. There's really no way to clean the, the channel with it in the gun. So as you can probably see how filthy it is, this is a chrome part and, uh, hold on one second. This is a chrome part and it is black. So I'm gonna clean this thing off real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. I don't clean my guns to perfection ever. Um, but you want to get the extractor claw for sure. I mean, good God, this brush was white when I started. Um, yeah. I'm just, you know, that if you're getting failures to extract, you might want to look into that too. Um, there we go. That's good. So I'm going to put this back together now. Uh, first thing, I'm going to go ahead and press this extractor back in. Um, get it flush with the outside of the There we go. It doesn't go all the way down. It just needs to be flush there. 
up next, push in the frying pan with the, the flats facing up. And do this. The frying pan block goes in and once that's on there, the firing pin holds it in place. Um, yeah, so pretty easy. Uh, I've got a couple different punches here I use. Um, my good old Glock one, uh, just a couple various punches and a little hammer. For a block, I just, a lot of times I just end up using a tape, roll of tape. But you just slide it in, lined up with the roll pin hole. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Now, where my pins go? Take the larger one and tap it in. This will be, of course, of course I'm doing it on camera so it doesn't want to cooperate. Alright, well, what I may end up doing, I have to get a little bit bigger hammer. So, another thing you gotta watch is the firing pin. You actually have to kind of push out the way once you get it going because it's not quite lined up right. But, Started. <clears throat> She's going. Oh. Now, once you get that one in. Uh, I'll pause this because I'm sure me banging on that doesn't sound good. But once you get that in there, then you can drive in the second one, the inner pin, and that puts tension on it. Um, anyway, let me get this one in and then I'll come back. All right, so it's in, it's flush, both sides. So now I'll take the smaller one much like the other, just start driving it in. Uh, this one goes in quite a bit easier because it's smaller for one and also you don't have the different surfaces to punch it in through. Uh, this one's just going in straight inside the other. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's in, uh, flush, both sides. As you can see, breech block is tight. So I'd say this gun's probably fixed, at least that aspect of it. Um, if you're looking into these, I wouldn't fear a gun that has mar marrings on the slide right by where the roll pins go. That mean, especially if it looks like it's been shot a bunch, it probably means that at least someone maintained it properly and replaced those. Um, my other one, the 1985 one, uh, someone had, it has a couple little nicks, not bad, but uh, on one of the sides of the slide, and which means someone had already replaced it, which based on the wear of it, the fact that it was tight, uh, I'm confident someone did, but. Anyway, so 
<clears throat> that fixes that problem on that gun. Um, just something to consider. I mean, these little roll pins are like $6 a set. I got four sets for 24 bucks. Uh, like if you want, we're planning on putting, I mean, these guns are kind of more collectible now than for most people anyway, but if it was a gun you were considering shooting a bunch, they're fine as long as when you, you know, really should be replacing your recoil springs every 3,000-ish rounds, but even if you went to 5,000 with like some pink recoil springs from Gray's gun, Gray Guns, uh, as long as you, when you replace the recoil spring, you replace one of these, you know, these are cheaper than the recoil spring, so, you know, for 16 bucks and a little bit extra time, just keeps the gun running longer, keeps it from, it'll keep it from beating itself to death, and, you know, they're, yeah, these old folded slide SIGs aren't as durable as the newer ones, but, uh, they, you know, they'll keep running. Like, I know this one needs a new recoil spring. Someone had not maintained this one. I won't shoot this one regularly. I will, probably won't shoot it at all until I get a new recoil spring. You can tell by the way it's curved. Uh, another old trick of telling a recoil spring is trying to roll it on a table, and if it doesn't roll straight, or if it doesn't roll at all, then you need to get a new one. But for right now at least uh, that's this project and of course the sometimes these are there we go so um, as you can see this one wobbles quite a bit uh, a little rattly but it'll still shoot uh, I'll probably take it out I know if it if that was in fact the issue if it wasn't the hammer spring then it'll at least fire a magazine without having a failure to fire uh, previously it wouldn't even do that so um, anyway real quick tip on the SIG 220, any SIG Pure series that's less German with the folded or snap slide. Uh, until next time, I'll talk to y'all later.